It rained overnight and while a lot of people in North Mississippi got snow, we got lots and lots of rain. Luckily, Darren made a big dent in this section. So instead of having a couple of small ponds, we just have some puddles and he even dug a trench out. Where, where am I? Right over there to let it drain some more. All right, what are you doing for me right now? Making the logo. You took the little doodle that I did and then scanned it and now we're basically tracing it in InDesign, correct? Yes, because I don't have um, oops. Uh, InDesign is the only software that I have to can do this. And it's pretty old. It crashed on me like four or five times. We used to have... But you had everything. You started off with Quark. I had, I had the full Adobe suite. But I don't do that for a living anymore. <laughs> nope. So we took Lucy to puppy daycare a few times. She's actually not great with dogs. We're working on it. She has a couple of dogs in the neighborhood. But the trainer said we needed to stop her from becoming a Velcro dog. I think we failed. She is literally sleeping at your feet and you're standing in here to keep her company while she, so she would be quiet. I think we kind Are of- Are sleeping? I think we failed at the Velcro dog. What if I'm a Velcro dad? <laughs> oh, I didn't think of it that way. But yeah, this is her playpen. She gets to come out a lot during the day and when the weather's not crappy outside we're outside a whole lot but she kind of doesn't settle down unless she's in here there we go to the biting yeah but i'm definitely ready for this playpen to be gone it's just a matter of getting her to settle down otherwise yeah it's my puppy dog yeah she definitely has batteries that are pretty endless but the weather's horrible and she's had almost no exercise today, so. Yeah, she got to go for a car ride while we ran errands. That was about it. A couple of walks. Which we're about to go for another walk as soon as I get the quilt off the floor. Do you want to go for a walk? Oh, say ready. I think she's like. You ready? Are you ready? Let's go for a walk. <laughs> yeah? I think she wants a walk. Did you make a withdrawal from the bank? She did. You got a bone. Good girl. She likes running errands. Yep. This is a problem that some of you will think is completely bizarre and that some of you have never heard of or some of you may have dealt with this personally. What you're looking at are dozens and dozens of crawfish mounds. Yes, actual crawfish. This part of the yard, uh, I really didn't want to tear it up, either leveling it or uh, raising it or anything like that. So we have the issue of crawfish mounds and I don't want to do anything like poisons or chemicals because of Lucy. Uh, she actually eats the mud as much as we try to stop her. She uh, eats some of the mud. She just takes the top off like it's a snow cone. And of course we try to stop her, but it's hard keeping her away from all of these. And this is one of the parts of the yard where there's no construction debris or roof debris. So this is sort of her play area. Um, she also, We'll dig them up. We don't know if she can hear the crawfish scuttling underground or if she can uh, smell them, but she's actually pulled up a few crawfish. It's kind of gross when you find her crunching on a crawfish or she brings you a crawfish claw that she's pulled off of one. But that's the reason I don't want to do anything chemical or, you know, poisons. Uh, I haven't done much research on how to deal with the problem, but I would like to take care of the problem at the source and not just, you know, come out here and knock these over with a hoe when they start popping up. So if this is something that you've dealt with and you have a good solution, please let me know. They're unsightly and yeah, it's just kind of one of those bizarre things that we have to deal with down here. Okay, I should have done a before on both of these, but I don't know if you could really tell much of a difference. All I'm doing is going through, I haven't done this one yet, I'm just going through and cutting off the little runners or the little smaller branches on both of these crepe myrtles. Uh, the people who owned the property before us, they would just come through and chop them down super short 
and they never really let them grow natural until just a couple of years ago. So we're definitely going to let them stay natural. I'm just trying to limb everything up around the yard so it's safer to not only uh, walk around, but also when I cut grass, when I'm on the riding lawnmower, that there's nothing that can really hit me in the head. Uh, I did just notice in this crepe myrtle, there's actually, I don't know if, yeah, there you go. You can see the leaves. There's an oak tree growing in here. So I am gonna take that out. I don't want that growing inside of the crepe myrtle. I just wanna leave the, the plant. And I think I was just about to trim this and then this limb right here. And I think that's what made me realize that's not crepe myrtle, that is an oak tree limb. So I'll have to get the loppers out right now. I just have, you know, some small hand clippers. So I will have to deal with that. But the birds like this tree. We've had birds nest in them over the past few years. So this is so def definitely something that I want to save. figure out how to get that out of the crepe myrtle without completely destroying it. beautiful day today not quite 60 but I've already had to go inside change and get rid of my fleece just put on a long sleeve t-shirt my goal right now is to dump out all the soil and all of these pots clean them and start to get ready for planting and starting seeds I still need Darren's help finishing the fence around the garden or container garden and I also need his help to cut down and add legs to pallets for tables and also that table in the background it needs to be shortened as well right now it would be way too high with the pots on top of it so that's what I'm working on right now and just enjoying the sunshine it's been pretty gray lately so this is a nice change these food grade barrels that we're going to use Darren has to cut them in half but he bought four of them last year and we went ahead and straight away cut one in half and the others have been stored. And I completely forgot until just now that they have plastic bags in them and I forgot to take them out. So I just unscrewed the lid and let's see if I can get this without making a giant mess with the water. Dump that and yeah, these had like an olive mix so there's an oily, olive stinky plastic bag in each of these. So let me go ahead and clean this out. I completely forgot about it until I was just standing over thinking if I could cut these barrels in half by myself when I remembered they needed to be cleaned. Oops. Drop it. Thank you. Drop it. Thank you. No, not. Sit. Thank you. 
Ready? Come on. Are you getting tired yet? I am. You've worn me out. Drop it. Thank you. Well, you can't jump for it after you drop it. That's against the rules. You ready? Taking advantage of the nice weather, wanting to be outside as much as possible. I'm doing little tedious tasks such as trimming branches and also we have bushes and trees that start growing in some of these camphor trees that we let just kind of go grow natural. So every eh, year or so I have to go through and just trim out everything that's growing in here that shouldn't be and I like doing it when it's smaller so it's not a problem and I can just do it with hand clippers instead of going and getting the big loppers. Another issue we're having besides the crawfish mounds is privacy. We completely lost all of our privacy when the fence fell down and when we bought this property and expanded the yard. Before the fence fell down we couldn't see to this road that goes right here and we definitely couldn't see all of the neighbors' houses. So now when we're outside in the yard or uh, especially sitting around the fire pit, uh, everybody can see us, we can see everybody else, and I just really miss having any sort of privacy. I've looked up some ideas, uh, anything from, you know, those plastic strips, which I don't wanna do that, that you weave in between the chain link to bamboo that you roll out, which would be way too expensive. This is 275 feet long. Uh, I've been looking into shrubbery and things like that. Just even bamboo that doesn't run, that clumps. Uh, just anything for, you know, like I said, more privacy. And I'm trying to, which I've mentioned, I'm trying to do either things that feed us or feed the pollinators. And I've had this discussion with my neighbor and she's kind of doing the same. She's minimizing and going to just all fruit trees and bushes. And she called this morning and she said, blueberries. She said, you know, they don't really... Uh, they're not trees or vines. They really are true bushes. And if we planted them correctly, you know, we could have fruit and privacy. So I'm leaning towards that. But if you have any other ideas on what we could do to get back some of our privacy, uh, right now we're completely on display uh, in all four directions. I mean, we are in the median. So cars can drive all the way around and see us from all four sides, which I definitely don't like. Lucy, where's your ball? You lost your ball and your treats? You don't care? You just want to know where daddy is? Daddy's getting a pizza.